So this is part five of my V-drum sander. Um, today we're going to be talking about the top and how to true the drum. How to sand it level and flat so uh, we don't want this drum to be higher or lower than, than the top. It has to be perfectly in line with it. Uh, also, um, how I cut the hole out of the top. You can see I don't want a big gap, a big space at the front or the back of the, of the top. Uh, so it has to actually be tapered. So the size of this hole up here is actually smaller than the bottom. It is tapered. I did this on my table saw. I set up my table saw at a, whatever angle I needed and I just ran it through. But because the table saw blade is round, I had to actually stop about here on, on both sides and uh, I just used a hand saw to finish the rest. But you can see that it's actually tapered to fit around the drum as close as possible uh, because I didn't want big gaps of space uh, at the front or the back. If I'm doing small pieces of wood, this way I can run it right over the top and, and it will sand uh, the whole thing without, without falling in the holes. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you how I measured that. I'm going to show you how I trued the drum. Now, obviously, it's done, so we're going to have to use a little bit of an imagination. So I'm going to uh, um, remove the top, remove the belt guard, and I'm going to give you a, a few more ideas of how I did it. I'm sure there's plenty of different ways of doing it. I've seen people hook up rails and use a router, and they'll follow the top of the, the with the router, and the drum is spinning. It's almost like a, a, like a built-in lathe, and they do it that way. Many ways of doing it, uh, but I'm just going to show you how I did it. And uh, so we'll zoom in, I'll get in a little closer, and I'll show you how I did it. So as I say, you want the drum to be on the same height as the tabletop. All right? I can put this piece of wood here and it should just touch. You can see it's just touching the sandpaper. Okay, it's hardly making it touch because when this thing is spinning it's a centrifugal force that's going to move this sandpaper away from the Velcro underneath and that's what's going to brush against the wood and sand. It's not a, an aggressive sander, it's not a big thickness, plane, uh, th sickness, thickness sander, it's just enough to, to, uh, to take off a, a very a little bit of, uh, of surface of the wood. Of course the more aggressive the paper the thicker it is so the more it's going to take off. So really, once this thing is set up, you shouldn't have to adjust anything. Now I, when I do put the aggressive paper on, I find it takes off too much. So I wanted to raise the top up a bit. You can see it doesn't quite sit on the box. And I did that because I put screws in here, two screws right in there, and all they do is raise and lower the top just a sixteenth of an inch. So if I put on the big 80 grit paper on here, I found that it, it because of the 80 grit, it's thicker than, than the uh, 300 grit, um, it actually was too aggressive and I didn't want that. So I put those screws inside the front and mm -hmm. this way it raises up the table just a hair so it's, it's absolutely level. So for me, the only time I have to adjust those screws is when I put on the 80 grit paper and I don't do that too often. So this is how ultimately we want it, all the way across. It's just, just touching it. So I'm going to show you how I trued up this thing I'm going to take the top off, I'm going to take off the belt guard, and I'll, I'll show you, uh, I'll get started on how I did this. For me to true up my drum, I used sandpaper with double-sided tape onto a board that I'm going to run across the front and the back of the sander. So I just have this basic uh, carpet tape. Where's the end of it? I got basic carpet tape here. It's not the foam tape. Foam tape is too uh, is too strong, and it's also um, it 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 moves. So uh, this is just basic thin carpet tape, double sided. And what I do is I just take a sheet of sandpaper, and I put three strips right across it uh, uh, on both sides and in the middle, and then I just flip it over and I double-sided tape it down to down to my board and I'm going to use that board and run it across the the front and the back okay so that's how I did it you can start with whatever grit you want this one here it just happens to be uh, 120 grit and uh, my discs on my drum sand on my drum are MDF so it, it my, my 120 is fine for me if you're going to use other type of material like a uh, plywood or whatever else you may want to uh, use uh, uh, another grit 
Okay, so once that's glued on or taped onto uh, my board, uh, then uh, we'll, uh, we'll start sanding. Okay, so you're just going to have to imagine that I just cut out all the discs on my circle cutting jig and I glued them all to my uh, axle and they're all sitting inside the box, inside the bearings and everything is, is, uh, is ready to be trued. Uh, so you can imagine that it's not going to be absolutely flat. So let's just imagine that, uh, that all these discs are here, they're, they're a little bit uh, you know, one's not uh, going to be exactly the same as the other, so I need to true this thing up. So as I explained earlier, I took my board and I glued my sandpaper to it uh, using double-sided tape. And what I do is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to ride the board along the front edge and push down on the back and I'm going to use it to sand the paper. Now, you can imagine there's no support at the back. If you tried it this way, you would never get your drum true because you would never be able to hold this at exactly the same angle throughout the whole travel. Okay, so what I do is I clamp, I clamp a board to the back. Okay, it'll be higher than the back of the box, of course. I clamp it there, and I can now use the two as, as, as uh, skis as, uh, uh, to ride my board along and sand this down. Okay, so what I would do is I would take a clamp, and I would clamp this board. Now, we're going to have to measure how high I want to do this. Okay, but I would clamp it. All right, in a way, in such a way, well, that we can ride the board with the sandpaper, we can ride it along the two pieces, along the back, along the front, that it would sand the top of the drum. So the drum is going to be spinning, and I would sand this riding along both edges. So. Now, the problem is, is that this board has to be perfectly parallel to the back of the box. Has to be exact. You can imagine if this end was lower, then my board, of course, would slide uh, at a different angle and make my drum not true. We want this thing to be absolutely on the same plane as, as the front and the backs. It has to be three quarters of an inch higher because that's where the three quarter inch top is going to be sitting on top of it and we want this to be right at the same level as a three quarter inch top. Okay? And don't forget, you're sanding the drum. You're still going to have your Velcro adhesive on it. You're still going to have your sandpaper on it. That will add uh, an eighth of an inch or so to your drum. So all this has to be taken into account. So what I do is I make sure that when I do true the drum, it is three quarters of an inch higher than the top and the back. Okay, so I will measure it so it's three quarters of an inch. I will raise and lower the back accordingly so when I sand it, this top will be three quarters of an inch uh, taller than this. When I put the Velcro on, when I put the sandpaper on, it will now stand proud of the top, but that's okay because I can adjust the top. I can lift up the top, in effect lowering the drum by these two adjustable screws here. Okay, so that gives me a little bit of play. So this is how it's going to be done. Now, if I measured, okay, this is up too high right now, for me, this needs to be at one and three quarter inches higher than the back. That's just because of the size of my box. If the box is shorter or longer, the whole angle is going to change. But all I did was I just took my board with my sandpaper and I put it down and I did it so it just touched the top of the drum and then you start sanding. You start sliding it back and forth and sanding. Once you've sanded it, you may have to lower the back a, a little bit more and keep going until this top of the drum is exactly where you want it to be. Once you get your backboard clamped onto the back of the box, uh, even though you may think that this is uh, parallel with the back of the box, that it's the same height by using uh, rulers or, uh, or some type of uh, measuring device, I don't think that's too accurate to, to use. I happen to have one of these little 
micro dial indicators here and I simply screwed it onto a block of plywood and what I do is I ride the plywood on the back of the backer board and you can see when I go around look at how the needle is moving it's getting farther and farther and farther away okay the needle is going farther away that means this end is higher than this end so this is no good so you have to adjust the board bring it down a little bit at that end and do it again until this is absolutely perfect all the way across the whole idea of this is to make sure a little bit of time spent now making sure that it is absolutely parallel with the back is going to ensure that your drum is, is, is perfectly level with the box so that's what I use once you do that you take your board with your with your sandpaper I slide it not on the sandpaper on here but on the edge I slide this along and I keep sanding even though you're you're higher now and let's say uh, the drum is thicker that's fine I can go freehand at the back for now but eventually I'm gonna hit this is what makes it perfectly smooth so you just slide it back and forth while the drum is turning you slide this thing back and forth every now and then you're gonna see just some sawdust right here it's not gonna cover the whole sheet because the drum is only touching the certain spot clean that off and continue going okay once you are down and your board is resting flat on the front and the back your drum should be perfectly smooth if you have to go down a little more let's say you have little divots or something in here and you want to go down a little more you're going to have to lower your backer board and when you do that you're going to have to ensure again using the micrometer to make sure it's absolutely level okay once that is done then this is going to be true this is going to be absolutely true with the front and the back of the box now you take off your backer board you put your top on and it should be absolutely level as for the top how I knew where to cut my the slot in the top in order to fit the drum around I simply took the top and I put it on the box right up against the drum and I drew my circle with my pencil I drew my circle around the arc of the drum after it's been sanded okay when that happens now then I have my arc I simply drew my straight lines of you know how close I wanted to be to that arc this is where so once I drew my lines close enough to my arc then this is where I knew I wanted the top to be the opening from here to here and I knew the bottom to go from here to here and I just went to the table saw and cut it at that proper angle once that's done the whole thing fits inside doesn't matter how much room you have at this side or this side because you're going to be placing passing your 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 stock over in the middle I tried to keep it as close as it could I think I got a quarter of an inch on each side but that's it so if you do it that way and as I say there might be better ways of doing it this is the way I did it once you do it that way then your drum is going to be absolutely in the same line as your tabletop your hole that's cut in it is going to be as close to the arc as possible leaving you with very little space and you'll be able to take small uh, stock and larger stock and pass it over and it's going to come out perfectly smooth so I hope that helps uh, with uh, how I um, how I trued the drum so that's it thank you very much